Hi everybody, this is Gex, and this is Tiny Tim. And today, these guys are gonna get a much needed enclosure remodel. We're going bioactive. All right, first order of business. Where to put you guys while I do this? Can't put them together, that's for sure. All right guys, so Tim is gonna go ahead and chill in his old enclosure, and Gex is going in this 10 gallon for a little bit. Now, please don't give me those stupid comments of, oh, you're a bad person, you put a leopard gecko in a 10 gallon tank. He's only gonna be in here for like an hour and a half. Chill, this is just a holding pen. All right, guys, so before we get started, let's go over a few materials that I'm going to be using in today's bioactive enclosure build. So the first thing I'm going to be using is a couple pieces of bark that are actually kind of big. My leopard geckos could actually use these as hides. I have uh, a couple little natural coconut hides here. I have a log hide that I'm going to use. I have a piece of wood here that I got for a really good price. We also have a... Reptor Rock Reservoir, just like uh, Tim has here. And the reason I wanted, I wanted to add this is because Tim has much more water in his reservoir than Gex does, it's just bigger. And the thing is, even though I'm still gonna be checking this water, I'm still gonna be changing it on a regular basis, I just like my animals to have enough moisture available to them all the time. So even if I'm not home for a day and I'm not able to do the water change and check it properly, at least I know my animals will have enough moisture to get them through the day or the weekend, however long go I'm away, until I get back. In this corner here, we have some drainage layer that I'm gonna be using with the false bottom, which I'm also gonna be using this mesh for, which I got online for also a really, really, really good price. I know I could have gotten this probably much cheaper at a garden store, but they probably would have tried to sell me a lot of it, and eh, I just don't have use for that much, so I just decided to see what the best deal was and got these. So that's gonna help out a lot for the next item that I have in this corner, which are some succulents. So if you guys have been following my Instagram, which is scales underscore 13, I actually teased this in a little picture earlier showing you guys that I got these for my new enclosure. Little succulents will give a good natural look to the enclosure and they'll definitely go well with that overall more natural appearance that I'm going for. Also, I have a couple of Arcadia 7% shade dweller bulbs right here. Uh, not just the bulbs, these are actually the kits. They come with the fixture as well. Now for heating, I'm going to be using some CHEs right here. The reason I'm gonna be using these is because the bulbs that I was using for heat before were on 24 seven. And I know that's not good for the leopard gecko's eyes because then they constantly have visible light exposed to them. For a crepuscular species that's coming out literally with this light beaming right in their face when it's supposed to be dark. It was just time for a change, guys. So this is what I'm gonna be using for now. I also just researched recently the uh, deep heat projector that Arcadia provides as well. So that may be a cool addition for the future, but for right now, I'm gonna use these CHEs. And, and to top it all off, I also have a grow light here that's specifically made for plants. And the reason I'm using this is because the UVB doesn't give off the proper light that's needed for plants to grow on their own and produce photosynthesis. So I'm adding this just so the plants will be healthier and that they'll do better in the leopard geckos new enclosure. So that way the plants and the leopard geckos will be in total harmony and they'll both be thriving. Oh wow, and how did I forget? Last but not least, we have our cleanup crew. So right here I have a mixture of springtails right here. Got a little seeding culture. And I also have some dwarf white isopods. Before we get started guys, I would just like to say that I am not an expert when it comes to bioactive enclosures. So if there's anything I'm doing wrong in my setup, this setup will be brand new by the time this video is posted. Please let me know right away if there's any tweaks. I'm perfectly fine with taking any criticism criticism as long as it's given to me in a nice respectful way just let me know if there's anything that i'll need to change to make things better for my leopard geckos because this is the first fully bioactive enclosure that i am attempting to set up and also if you're one of those guys who really doesn't like bioactive enclosures 
for whatever reasons that you have. If this isn't what you are really interested in as far as reptile keeping and this type of husbandry, this video is just not for you. So right now I have Tim's new enclosure. Just took it out of the wrapping and everything like that. Gonna get it wiped down and everything to make sure it's good before I start adding stuff to it. Uh, just so you know guys, for now I am gonna be leaving this uh, pretty much styrofoam background in both of these enclosures. Just so that way these guys will have uh, that nice natural look to it. Now, I know super worms, mealworms will definitely eat through this if they get through it and if they get loose in your enclosure and stuff like that. Eventually I may replace these with a better substance, maybe something like those uh, like those rock back backgrounds that Brian Barcheck uses, or I might just make something myself since this is a small space, maybe something ceramic or something out of some foam. But for now, this is what I'm going to be using. Like I said, I'm always open to changing things, but this is gonna be here for now. Oh man, so I guess if you call this day, this is night. So it's pretty messy in here. Just a lot of calcium powder on the uh, carpet. So I'm gonna clean that. I'm gonna wipe all this stuff down before I even start adding the false bottom and the drainage uh, stone and everything like that. And then we'll get ready to get set up. All right, looking pretty good. So now it's time to add the drainage layer. So for some of you guys who might be new to bioactive enclosures, you guys are probably wondering, okay, what is a drainage layer and why are we adding it? Well, here's the thing. Even though I'm not going to be adding a lot of water to the plants because they are succulents and you don't want to overwater them, you don't want water pooling around the plant's roots, around most plants for that matter, but especially for succulents. Succulents are very sensitive to being overwatered. So what I'm gonna be doing is adding this nice drainage layer where when I do water my succulents, the water will drain away from the roots down to the very bottom. So that way the plants won't start rotting from excess moisture. Awesome, all set. And the thing is guys, I didn't wanna make this drainage layer real deep. The reason being is because I'm not gonna have this as a high humidity environment. This environment's literally going to be about 30 to 40% humidity overall. So I just wanted a nice thin drainage layer just to make things better for my succulents. Other than that, we can continue. All right guys, so we're gonna start with our first layer of substrate. Now this first layer of substrate is gonna go where the plants are gonna root themselves into the substrate. This is gonna be the very bottom layer. So what I have here is clay sand, cocoa fiber, and some soil. Now I know this looks like a lot of sand to mix in with the cocoa fiber in the soil, but keep in mind, this is gonna be the bottom layer. Also, I just wanna let you guys know that the way I'm gonna be doing this is, is there's gonna be different mixtures for each layer. I actually took a page from Northern Exotics and the way that he did his bioactive leopard gecko substrates. This guy's got an awesome channel, especially if you guys like bearded dragons, and Savannah Monitors, I really suggest you check out his channel. He's an awesome guy from the UK. He really knows his stuff, has a super cool collection. So please check this guy out. He's super awesome. But anyway, guys, so this layer is going to be a lot finer and this is gonna go into the deeper spots. And this part's gonna be tamped down a lot. And this is where the bottom of the roots are gonna be laid. So we're gonna mix up the same ratio for both enclosures, put that nice thin layer down, and then we're gonna set our plants where we want them to be. All right, so we got the first layer down, time to add our plants. All right guys, so as you can see, I have my plants sitting right on top of this bottom layer here. Now guys, keep in mind, this is not the soil that they plants are actually going to expand their roots in. This is just the bottom layer where these guys are actually going to sit on top of, which is why you see the knotted part here that has all the roots actually still exposed. So now I'm actually going to add the next layer where these guys are actually going to spread and actually start putting their roots into to get the nutrients that they need in order to start growing and thriving. So this next layer is about 80% topsoil with 
about 10% cocoa fiber and about 10% sand. Now keep in mind guys, this isn't a how-to. I'm not telling you guys how to do this properly or anything like that. This is just what I'm using for now. And I'm just explaining what I'm doing. So this layer is what the plants are actually going to root into, which is why it's mostly topsoil. That way these guys can get the nutrients that they actually need. And this layer will actually be better for the leopard geckos to dig into if they so desire. Woo, looking nice. Alrighty, so we got our second layer in, which is mostly topsoil, which is a little bit of sand for hold and a little bit of cocoa fiber. Now guys, keep in mind, this layer is twice as thick as the first layer I put down. The first rate layer just looks a little higher if you are looking at the levels right here because I still have that false bottom there and it's kind of pushing that level up a little bit. But the reason I did this one about twice the thickness, yeah, you can see really good right here, is because I wanted to make sure that this layer of substrate is holding the bottom layer of substrate down more. We wanted this one to be a lot thinner so that way the any water can drain through it much easier. And that way, if the leopard geckos do decide to do a little digging, they're not pulling this layer up more. So now we have one more layer to put down. Just before I add the next layer, I just remembered I forgot to mix in some sphagnum moss. So I just took a little bit of sphagnum moss, kind of rubbed it in my hands and just sprinkled it throughout this top layer, just so that way I didn't forget to add this to the mixture. All right, guys, so we have our last substrate mix here. So this one's going to be about 80 to 85 percent topsoil, just like the first one, uh, about 10 percent sand, 10 percent cocoa fiber. But the difference between this one is I'm going to top it off with some nice leaf litter on top for the leopard gecko. So that way they'll have a little bit more ground cover. Alrighty guys, the last layer is set. So I tamped down the soil so that way it wasn't too loose for our leopard geckos. And I added some leaf litter right across the, the top. Now the thing is, I kind of wish I ordered more leaf litter because this is actually less than what I actually wanted. But no problem, I can always order some more stuff later on. Alright guys, so even though we're going bioactive, I still believe in a lot of the basic principles in leopard gecko keeping. For example, you gotta have your warm hide, your cool hide, and your humid hide. So for the warm hide, I decided to give these guys these naturalistic log hides for their warm hide. And for the humid hide, this is what I'm gonna do. So I took these two plastic lids. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bury them just below the substrate. And on top, I'm gonna put some sphagnum moss. And then I'll put these little plastic caves on top of them. All right, so we have our little plastic lid right here buried, just so you guys can see. And we got our sphagnum moss right here. So now this, little plastic hide is going to go on top and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. All right, now let's figure out where we're going to put these cool hides. All righty, we have our coconut hides in place and these will serve as our cool hides. You can see Gex is right over there across the way and you see this one right here. Now I had to move this succulent a little bit more forward just so that way it's not crowded. So I think this is pretty good spacing. So now I can add the rest of the decor. Woo! Oh man. This looks awesome. All right guys, we're almost there. All I have to do now is add the cleanup crew and set up the lighting. And then we can put our leopard geckos in the new home. Should probably miss down these moist hides too. Neither of them are in shed, but it'd be nice for them to have that awesome microclimate. Oh yeah. Be free. Be free and keep my enclosures clean. Oh yeah. Let's check this out. We got our CHEs in. Just got them heated up so that way I can get my leopard geckos in a nice warm new enclosure. Got the thermometers in place. I got that little probe right inside the warm hide on both sides. Got this one over here too. Waiting for these to heat up. Actually, let's check out the UVB. Let's light this bad boy up. Whoa. Oh my God. This looks great. I'm so happy right now. 
Wow, check that out. You can even see the color difference in all three layers of the soil. That is awesome. Wow. Oh, man. Hope these plants do well. This is going to be awesome. All right. Let's give this thing a couple minutes to heat up. Then we'll add our boys to their new homes. Big Tiny Tim. You're up first, Brody. You really need this. You had that old fashioned 20 long fish tank, and now you got a nice exoterra and a nice bioactive enclosure. Come here, buddy. Wanna go inside? Wanna go inside? That's an awesome thing, guys. See, this is one reason why I really wanted to add at least one hide. Even though it's plastic, at least his hide is gonna smell like him. Even though he's in a new environment, he'll have a nice, familiar smell. That'll make him feel more comfortable and help him acclimate a little quicker. All right, let's let you do your thing and I'm gonna put Gex in, all right, bud? My main man, Gex, my oldest reptile. Welcome to your new bioactive enclosure. You see that? It's calling you, bud. You ready? He's albino. I hope this doesn't bother his eyes. We'll see. Hopefully he doesn't freak out too much. Alright, not bad. Tim's already going into his warm hide, which is great. I want him to warm up. He's been in that, uh, I guess you can call his old enclosure a holding pen for quite a while now. So I think they got to get nice and warm. Gex is just take it in, staying towards the front. It's a little weary. It's a new environment. Got some stones in here from his old enclosure that'll give a good smell, along with the Gila monster skull. His warm hide. Oh, wow. Actually, bud, you got spoiled. And you have your favorite sleeping hide in there. This is going to smell a lot like your old home. All right, guys. It's the day after the enclosure build. And I'm just going to give you guys a quick recap of everything that I've done and why I made this change. Yep. Well, that got broken already. All right, guys. So before I start off this recap, I want to give a special shout out to two people who are actually asking for leopard gecko videos because they haven't seen any leopard gecko videos in a while. And I figured I should mention them since I'm starting this off because these guys actually really gave me a spark, spark and made me think of, hmm, what can I do for my leopard geckos to give them a better life that I can show off to you guys? Since I haven't really made many videos specifically about them on my channel in a very long time. So the two subscribers are Bill Novakos, uh, I believe that's how I pronounce his name. If I mess up your last name, sorry, dude. Um, and the other YouTube channel is It's Cheap. So you two guys, thank you for following the channel. Thank you for giving me the inspiration to make this change and give my leopard geckos a wonderful new home and hopefully something that really mimics what they have in nature and gives them more of a natural setting to live in. Now, to start off with guys, I'm gonna basically break down everything that I have here, including my lighting and heating, and basically tell you why I made the, I made the change. So let's start off with how the enclosure is made. So, as you guys saw in, earlier in the video, I showed you my three layers of substrate. I got the very fine grainy stuff at the bottom, so that way excess moisture can drain into the drains later very easy. Then I have the very soft, rich uh, mid layer, which is the thickest layer. And on top, you have a layer that's comprised almost entirely of soil and eco earth. So if you guys look, I have uh, a couple of succulents in here. I have this one, which Tim decided to trample last night, but it's okay. Can't plant a plant or two without losing a leaf, right? Um, and I have another succulent back there, another one over here. I forgot the name of them guys because I'm really, really bad with plants uh, as far as scientific names and stuff like that, even common names. I do reptiles, guys, not plants. But I have these guys set up on the cool side because I just didn't want to overheat my plants and wind up burning them up. And 
The reason that I planned them kind of staggered the way they are is as these two plants in particularly grow, hey Tim, come back out. I want them to kind of get bigger and kind of give more cover between where the leopard gecko's enclosure is, just so that way these guys don't see each other all the time and they don't really get bothered by each other's presence. One thing I'm thinking about doing is just getting like a black piece of construction paper and just slipping it in between the two enclosures, just so that way these two males that I have here won't get all territorial if they see each other and wind up stressing each other out. I also have the three hides, like I said earlier. Now, if you look at my hides, I have a warm hide, cool hide and right in the middle I have a humid hide. The humid hide has some nice uh, spag moss inside which Tiny Tim right now is enjoying. So as you can see for both of the leopard gecko enclosure I have more natural hides with coconut hide here and I have a half log hide over here and I have a plastic fake hide in the middle and the reason that I'm using the fake hide for the humid hide is because I'm going to use this to be spraying the spag moss in here quite often to help out with their shedding and when I thought about it I didn't want to put a hide in that would just break down from the excess moisture and potentially grow mold on the inside which may cause issues for my leopard gecko so I decided to use something plastic for now in the future I'm going to be searching around for ceramic hides for my leopard geckos or maybe make some of my own that'll be pretty cool just so that way they won't be exposed to too much plastic in a heated area and also so they'll have something with a nice rougher kind of more natural surface so that way when these guys shed or if they're trying to remove the plugs from their femoral pores they'll be able to get those out on a nice surface that'll actually grab the plugs and pull them out so I got these nice tall water bowls in the back. In the beginning, I thought they were gonna be kind of an eyesore, but since this reservoir in the back is completely transparent and it's not that green looking reservoir like I had in this old water bowl here, which I'm still gonna keep as a spare just in case, um, it actually doesn't look too bad with the background. And also, the part that's the actual bowl is a nice tan color, so it actually blends in pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. As you can see, I have a little bit of leaf litter scattered around, but that's basically just some organic material for the isopods and springtails to start breaking down. That way they'll have something to get them started so that way they can start feeding. Speaking of feeding, he's probably thinking I'm gonna feed him soon. You guys may also see that I have a couple pieces of bark laying around both of the enclosures. And I have some wood that I added as well to, add, to give some rough textures. I also have some nice stones in the front because these guys do live in areas that are more scrubland and also around rock outcrops. So I just wanted to mimic that by adding some stones here. Also, when I feed these guys, there are superworms and mealworms. I'm going to be feeding them off of tongs, but I'll also be putting them on these stones so that way they can snatch them off the top of the stone so that way they don't wind up getting a mouthful of substrate. Even though the substrate on the upper layer is mostly soil and eco-earth, which can pass through the digestive system much better than a lot of other loose substrates at the same time, I want to give them something that mimics their natural environment while also keeping them safe as well. Now let's go with the lighting. So the lighting up top that I have are the Arcadia Shade Dweller bulbs. These bulbs actually only come in one size, so they're, they were kind of small. I was actually looking for a 24 inch bulb for these, so that way they would span over the entire enclosure. But this is the only size that they came in, and after thinking about it for a little while, I was like, eh, you know what? For now, we can try these out. If not, I can get a longer tube bulb later on. But leopard geckos are crepuscular and these guys aren't going to be sunbathing under these things constantly so with that being said they're not going to get a lot of exposure anyway just due to their reclusive nature and the time of day that they are active so maybe that's the reason why they just don't have it spanning across the entire tank but at the same time i'm still thinking about maybe changing that later on but for now i'm just glad that i do have some nice uvb exposure for them that isn't too strong and it's made for their lifestyle and it will that will still help them synthesize vitamin D3. Now in the back here, I have a plant light. This light, most likely I won't be running as long as the UVBs. The UVB lights will be running 12 hours a day. This one's only here for the purpose of the plants. The reason being is because after doing a little research, and I actually picked up this little tip from Leopard Geckos, 
YouTube channel. She's really awesome. And she said that in the beginning she was only using a UV bulb, but the thing is, a U, uh, UV lights don't give off the proper wavelengths needed for plants to perform photosynthesis. Now, when it comes to heat, I'm using CHEs right now. And the reason that I'm using these CHEs is because at night, it's pitch black. I wanted to give these guys something where I could provide heat all day long without producing visible light all day long. So that way at nighttime, it can be completely dark. So that way in the dead of the night, they won't have any visible light that'll disturb them while they're coming out and do any damage to their eyes. In the future, as I mentioned earlier, I might use a deep heat projector because that's actually a bulb that doesn't produce any visible light that's detectable for reptiles. So I'm thinking about using one of those at one point, but for now, I'll just settle for the CHEs and I'll see how these work out. Like I said, I'm always looking to improve and I'm always thinking about making changes to my enclosures. So we'll see how the CHEs work first. Guys, now we're gonna talk about why I made the change and why I wanted to switch my leopard geckos to a fully bioactive enclosure. So this started a few months ago. When I inspected both of my leopard geckos, I noticed at one point that their femoral pores were clogged and I became a little concerned. And after doing a little research, I found out that you can actually just take a nice moist Q-tip and you can remove the plugs easily without actually harming the leopard gecko, without squeezing them out or doing anything that could potentially injure the gecko. I found out on leopard geckos channel that male leopard geckos during breeding season will actually produce more of that substance, that waxy substance that, that comes out of those pores. And the thing is they can be clogged if they can't dislodge them. So what she suggested was, Instead of having a tank where there's nothing but smooth plastic around, add some nice natural textures. Add some stones, add some wood, add some bark. Add different things that can help these guys actually unplug their pores on their own, just so that way they don't get plugged, they don't get messed up, and they won't have the chance of getting a potential infection that can harm your leopard gecko's health. So I was like, okay, cool. Maybe I can just change it a little bit of the decor. Then I also saw when my leopard geckos were eating that Gex, which is my Bellobino leopard gecko here, actually got his teeth stuck on some of the reptile carpet. So I was thinking, okay, well maybe I can just change it to paper towels and maybe that will keep them from getting caught. Also, I noticed once or twice when they were walking that their feet got caught on the little strings on the reptile carpet that I was using. But another thing that leopard gecko said is if you can give them a substrate that can provide more moisture and a little bit more humidity so that way the femoral pores don't get clogged that will actually be very beneficial for the leopard gecko so i was thinking okay why not do just eco earth right and i was thinking about just doing the eco earth and just doing naturalistic but then i just started learning about bioactive you can totally do a bioactive enclosure for a leopard gecko there's no reason you can't these guys come out come from outside in nature where there's going to be little little deconivores and things that are breaking down stuff in the substrate like decaying leaves and any other organic matter so i was like okay um, this might be something that i try out and then i also saw a couple other youtubers that were talking about uvb and how if they can synthesize the vitamins on their own then they won't be going through another process which i forget the name of where if an animal doesn't have the proper vitamins let's say if they're eating low quality food they're not getting the proper lighting so they can't produce vitamin d3 then they'll start trying to eat their substrate in order to try to supplement those vitamins that they're missing so i was like hmm okay that's interesting maybe that's something that i need to look into maybe i need to start providing UVB for my leopard geckos. And that's when I learned about the shade dweller bulbs and that even though these guys are not at high noon, let's say like an Aki monitor that uses like a 12% UVB, these guys have a 7% UVB and these guys are shade dwellers so they're not going to be constantly sitting under it but it is good for them to have some exposure to it for their bone density and to, pre to prevent metabolic bone disease. And it'll also keep them from having that urge to eat their substrate. So I was like, okay, well, if I do everything all at once, then my leopard geckos may actually be able to have a complete naturalistic setup with everything they need and still be able to put on a proper loose substrate. So that's when I decided it was time for me to 
put this plan to action. So I started ordering different things, doing some more research as I went, started collecting all these different pieces of wood and stone and these new hides. And I just decided that if I'm going to do a bioactive enclosure, I have to do it right because I don't want to do anything that can negatively impact these animals. What I wanted to do was give them a better quality of life because I believe that the benefits of this fully bioactive enclosure will benefit my leopard geckos a lot more than what they were previously on. Leopard geckos can be found in Afghanistan, Iran, India, and the thing is, these are a ground dwelling species. And even though they can be found on rock out crops, even though yes, it is 100% true that these guys don't live in sand dunes and they shouldn't be kept on a bed of just plain sand as their substrate, which I highly do not recommend as a substrate for leopard geckos. These guys do have soil where they come from and these guys only walk a few centimeters above the ground. They're not arboreal. So these guys are walking on the ground where there's dirt. I will be updating you on the progress of my leopard geckos and how well they're doing in these new fully bioactive enclosures. Guys, I really hope you like this video. I took a lot of time to gather all the materials I needed and I did a lot of research to try to get this right. As I said before, if there's anything you think I need to adjust, please let me know so that way I can make that adjustment for the health and well-being of my leopard geckos. I hope you guys like this build and hope, and I really hope you guys like what I'm doing with my reptiles where instead of just buying a new pet all the time to get likes, I'm actually trying to improve the husbandry of my reptile so that way they can have a good quality life because I love and care for these animals so much. So guys, I really want to thank you for watching this video today. And if you want to see more of what I'm doing, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends about the channel as well, because I'd love to see new subscribers and I love talking to people. And if you guys really want to talk to me and actually have a good conversation about different things, share pictures, share internet links, research, new animals, whatever, please guys, don't forget to add me on Instagram. My Instagram is scales underscore 13. On Instagram, it's much easier to have a conversation with you guys. Sometimes with the comments on YouTube, they'll just get lost between all the comments or I just won't get a notification because I'll get a few notifications at once. And sometimes I'll literally just drop out of the conversation. So if that's happened to you guys before, I do apologize for that. But if you guys do add me on Instagram and start talking to me through Instagram, it's much easier for me to keep the conversation going so that way I can stay in contact with you guys. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Peace.